What's up, YouTube? It's been a while. I've been in here in the wild studio cranking out content for our new Tribe 10K coaching accountability program. You can learn more at tribe10k.com. I read today just something that I just have to share. It's just so good, okay? It's from the book, Straight Line Leadership. This book should have been more popular. Like, it's just one of those gems that I'm so fortunate I came across. It's kind of hard to get it in print, but you can get it on Kindle, I'm pretty sure, for $10. I highly, highly recommend getting this book and reading it. It's like every single chapter, I want to highlight the entire chapter. That's how good it is. So let's just go through this chapter real quick. And the title of this chapter, I guess I'll probably make the title of the video, but Realistic Optimism Versus Unrealistic Pessimism. This stuff is so gold that I'm pretty much going to read it. Please support the authors, though, or author. This stuff is golden, right? And thank you if you somehow watch this video. I just, I'm, I'm, I'm in love with your book. I really am. It's just amazing, okay? Straight line coaches utilize the many years of deep research done by Dr. Martin Seligman on the scientifically measurable benefits of optimism. His breakthrough study is contained in this book, Learned Opti Optimism, wherein he establishes that optimists are far from more effective than pessimists in all categories of life. So real quick, think about that. Optimists are better in all categories of life than pessimists. If that's speaking to you, then you know exactly what you need to start working on, your mindset. Our functional straight line distinction is this. Optimists are realists. Pessimists are unrealistic because of what they see and don't see. That's interesting, good point. Optimism is a practice of focusing on opportunities and possibilities rather than complaints and regrets. It's obvious, therefore, why optimists are more effective than pessimists. It also turns out, and you can logically verify this, that optimists are healthier than pessimists, they're financially more successful than pessimists, and they perform better in learning institutions than pessimists. Not only that, optimists have been more fulfilling, have more fulfilling relationships than pessimists. All of that comes from focusing and acting on possibilities. So as a optimist, you focus on possibilities rather than being stuck and, and dragged down by what you perceive as the the problems or the issues or the, the thing, the, you know, the walls in the way, okay? Whereas, whereas optimists are gonna bust through that wall, they're gonna dig under it or they're gonna climb it or they're gonna go around it, okay? It's still good, still good. The best news in Seligman's Sel research studies is that optimism and pessimism are learned habits. I'm gonna say that again. Optimism and pessimism are learned habits. Usually by the people you're around and by your conditioning. So no matter where you are in your life right now, if you wake up every single day super negative, you can change that, okay? So keep that in mind. You're not fixed. Also, if you're naturally optimistic and some bad shit happens in your life, you can definitely be pulled to the other end of the spectrum. So something to be vigilant of at all times. They are not inherited. There is no gene for optimism. We create it as a deliberate habit. All humans behave largely according to habits, and these habits are developed through repetition. The habit of being realistic is the habit of seeing all possibilities. It's what an optimist does. The pessimist does the opposite. The pessimist quits too soon. The pessimist shuts off even the possibility of possibility. <laughs> That's funny. His artificially limited thinking is often used as a misguided protection me mechanism for dealing with future disappointment, right? It's fear-based. The problem with that habitual mechanism is that the practice of avoiding disappointment has all of one's life ending up being a total disappointment. Wow, that's crazy. Optimism is programming. It's not a character trait, even though we usually think and speak of it that way. She's such an optimistic person. He's a born pessimist. No. Optimism can be learned. It's a habit caused by repetition. Optimism repeats proactive, creative, accepting thoughts. When problems arise, the optimist asks, considering what I'm up to, what do I want to create with the situation? And there's a good quote here. When I open my eyes in the morning, I am not confronted by a world, but by a million possible worlds. Colin Wilson, spelled just like me. Colin, C-O-L-I-N. Optimists interrupt their negative trains of thought. They watch over their thoughts and know that they do not have to believe any of them, right? They don't have to, it's a choice. Pessimists believe almost everything they think. Once a gloomy thought occurs to a pessimist, he latches onto it and believes it as if it were the truth. Optimists challenge negative thoughts. They do not believe in them, right? So those thoughts come to your mind, the negative thoughts, and optimists challenge them. 
They don't just accept them as reality because they thought them. They don't have an attachment to, to them just because they thought them. They actively challenge, and that's part of being self-aware, is to know that no matter what you view in the world, you should always be trying to re-vet that information. Make sure that you're not being delusional to yourself, right? Asking yourself hard questions. Is, is this legitimate or is it not? That's part of being self-aware. They, uh, they use their minds optimally and actively and guard their potent mi mindset with everything they've got. Pessimists unrealistically take the first thought they think and never question it. See? You have to be self-aware. You have to question yourself. They shut down the act of inquiry and thereby they preclude any chance that they might have had at finding inspired ideas and innovative, innovative action. I've been talking all day. I'm, I'm struggling, if you can't tell. Optimists know that their feelings come from their thinking. They also know that they are in charge of whatever they challenge or accept, any line of thought that appears. Therefore, they end up being in charge of how they feel. Straight line clients, when learning this distinction, take charge of their moods, attitudes, and morale. Well, that's the whole chapter. So, first of all, get the freaking book, right? Second of all, get a Kindle. It's amazing. Thousand, book here, thousand books here, I can have it in a second. Freaking amazing. Third, if a book comes out and you think you like it, buy it right away, okay? That's just a tip for life. Just get it, get the book, right? Re read it and be an optimist and remind yourself that optimism and pessimism are habits. Think about that again. Optimism and pessimism are habits. They're not inherent. There's not a gene, okay? It's literally about what you do when you wake up every single day. Are you gonna be an optimist today? Or are you gonna be a pessimist today? And you're gonna have days where you're gonna be a pessimist. Recalibrate yourself to optimism when that happens. Constantly pull yourself to the place of where you wanna be. Because fundamentally, you wanna live a better life, right? You wanna have more money and success and happiness. Pessimism blocks you to all those things. And even if you have those things, what it does is it moves you to a place of scarcity, right? Pessimism literally removes happiness from the things that in your life that are good. Like, why would you ever want to do that? Keep watching the news, you'll get sucked into it. Get addicted to social media and watching people live their lives and having things like the comparison effect mess your brain up, you'll be pessimist, right? You have to control what goes in your eyes and ears and the people around you you have to be vigilant with this type of stuff. And then you have to practice op optimism. Practice controlling things that come to your mind that you let in, right? Because they affect you and you know that they affect you. So you need to block things as much as possible. Things that aren't good for you don't need to go in, okay? People around you that want to be negative Nancys, they want to pull you down, they want to criticize you, they don't deserve your time. You don't owe them anything. And if, if you're family, then you can find ways to mitigate it. Stand up for yourself, be your own person. Do not, do not let people trample on your happiness. Do not let people infect you with their negative bullshit, okay? Like and subscribe, that's it.